An earthquake is a sudden movement of rocks below the Earth's surface, which causes a disturbance that travels across the surface, much like ripples on a pond when a rock is thrown. Seismometers are like objects floating on the water surface and move up and down as the ripple passes. Where the ripples start is called the epicenter. Let's look at a computer simulation of this. We see that graphing the position of bobbing balls is like a seismograph. Notice that the nearest ball bobs first and bobs the most. Let's say we have just one seismometer. All it can tell us is that we have had an earthquake. However, it can't tell us which direction the earthquake came from or how far away it was. Was it a small one nearby or was it a big one far away? What seismologists have learned from studying many earthquakes is how fast they travel across the Earth's surface. So what we can do is run our movie backwards and draw a circle around the seismometer that grows at the same speed as the earthquake travels. The further we go back in time, the larger the circle grows, while the earthquake shrinks by the same amount. Remember, the epicentre could be anywhere on any of these circles. So how can we find the epicentre? Well, what we need is three seismometers. With three seismometers, we can do something called triangulation. Here's how it works. The seismometer that detected the earthquake last must be the furthest away. So let's start our circle there. As we go backwards in time, we start other circles at the time that the other seismometers detected the earthquake, until all three circles are growing. If we keep going, at some point in time, all three circles will join up at the same place. This is our earthquake epicenter. In addition, the time also tells us when the earthquake happened. So now we know when and where the earthquake occurred.